My name is Arindam Day, and I'm a lecturer at the University of Queensland, a local university here, literally 10 minutes ahead by bus. So however, this work was done with my collaborators and was done in India, uh, in the University of, sorry, in the Institute of International Technology in Delhi. So the student Ayushi was supposed to come here, but unfortunately she didn't get um, the visa on time, so she couldn't be here, and I'm basically at last minute plan B activation. So anyway, we'll see how we do. Uh, so this is the rough overview of the talk. Um, so we'll just uh, go through the redirected working, what it is, and our method is conformal redirected working. And then I'll present the study results and, and I'll conclude. Um, uh, Carlos uh, presented nicely what um, redirected working is all about. It's basically a technique of using a smaller um, real-world physical space um, to navigate in a larger uh, virtual space. Right, it's done uh, using two primarily two methods. One is um, about manipulation of games, again, what Carlos has presented about, and uh, this is more implicit way. User do not normally um, understand that unless, of course, you want them to understand through making the motion sick. Um, and, of, and there's another method of doing it a bit overtly when, when you hit or about to hit an object, then uh, the system tells you to move uh, in a particular direction so you know that you are being re redirected. So, um, so uh, most of the um, uh, redirect working is done through path redirections. Here is an example from Sun et al. So if you see on the left of the image, um, that this is uh, how, how they have moved in, in VR, but in physical space, they have been just cycling around in a, in a large room, right? So, uh, but in our method, what we are trying to do is to use free from redirection. So they don't have, they don't go uh, in rounds. So what we have done is we have been uh, virtual and physical spaces, um, so two, two physical spaces are of similar size, but it's a shared space, so it's more about collaboration and bringing uh, people um, into each other's space. Um, and then uh, the virtual space is deformed to fit the real space, and I'll talk about the information um, soon. So the main contribution of this work is a, a pipeline of how um, a shared space redirection um, can happen and also <laughs> the transformation. So when we have two spaces, like two physical spaces, but one virtual space, and then we can match the virtual space to either of those spaces. So it's, it can be um, reversed. And also we have done a validation study um, uh, to with, with this with other techniques in this um, domain. So for because our focus is on more about the collaboration and the shared space, so uh, we are hoping that one person can um, invite as a guest can invite another host, but guests and hosts are on some remote locations, um, and then um, but they have a, they are in a similar um, physical space, right? And then the host invites the guest, and then guests can walk in the same virtual space as the host, but in their real physical space, which is somewhere else, and it looks different. So here. You can see in the bottom image, the, the virtual uh, space is designed to match the guest's uh, physical space, um, but uh, the guest space is um, quite, uh, quite different. Anyway, but um, so this is the, the setup, how, how it is done. So more details are um, on the paper, but one key thing to understand here is that um, the host and guest space may have the different layouts, but if there are other objects, those, those objects have to be attached to the wall, so it cannot be somewhere in, in between the room. So, we, And that's one thing, and another key thing to understand here is we have created a canonical space or a normalized space for all participants so that we can do the reverse transformation as needed, right? And then, um, um, and that's, that's basically, it. Uh, that's the technique. And we do it based on the, the higher dimension of the rooms. Let's say if the room size is eight by 10 meters, then then 10 becomes one and it becomes basically one by 0.8 and we do it for both of those um, uh, physical spaces and then we come up with um, a canonical host space um, like this where um, the guest space is so sorry the host space is morphed into the guest space and there is a bit of a deformation which is unavoidable but we try to minimize the deformation to avoid any kind of motion sickness or any adverse effect um, so we now move on to the study. So what we did is uh, we used our method to compare it to um, other methods called zigzag and steer to center. And uh, the zigzag method is basically um, uh, the, the system tells you to walk towards the uh, farthest uh, wall in, in the in the physical space. Whereas the steer to center part, it works for a bigger um, bigger uh, physical space, and that basically wants you to move towards the center of the space. 
um, whereas our conformal path method was a free, uh, free movement. Um, so it was uh, between subject uh, variable and our another um, within subject variable was a trial. So each participant uh, did three trials using the same um, same walking method. So we just wanted to find out if uh, going through the same thing multiple times will improve their performance in each of these uh, conditions. So, so the main experimental task that we had was about collecting um, coins. So we told the participants that uh, you are now being invited. To, and and the, so in the guest was an experimenter and, and the experimenter practiced uh, coin collection. And we told that you are competing with uh, the guest in collecting those coins. And we placed those coins in a way that the guest has to traverse most of the space um, uh, to, to get an actual effect. Um, and it, it continued for four minutes per trial. Right. Overall, we had 36 participants, 12 in each group, and we measured outcomes such as um, um, coins collected, um, and then social presence, um, presence, and then um, even physical sickness using uh, the FFP questionnaire. So here is an example of the, how the actual layout looked like and with the coins there. And of course, we told them that collect coins as fast as you can. So we had three um, hypotheses mainly. One, um, so we have expected that canonical or so conformal method will, will result in highest number of um, coin collections among all the methods. Um, and then we, it, it will have less simulator sickness and higher uh, presence. And it, we also expected it to have higher uh, social presence. So with the results, what we noticed is our first hypothesis was um, accepted. So um, conformal method performed the best and had highest number of coin collected, coins collected. But um, we think this is because um, the participants didn't have to reorient themselves like other two methods. Um, and then the second hypothesis was partially accepted. We found less simulator sickness, which could be, again, uh, because of the less uh, rotation they had to do uh, uh, in, the, in the physical space but we didn't find any significant difference um, for presence. And the third hypothesis, again, was partially uh, accepted. We um, noticed that uh, there are not overall uh, an effect on social presence, but in a couple of um, subscales of um, co-presence and behavior interdependence, we noticed um, a significant difference. And again, um, our conformal method performed the best, and in, uh, for co-presence, it was um, better than significantly better than zigzag, and in uh, behavior interdependence, it was significantly better than than the steer to center method. Right. So, overall, uh, to conclude, um, we just presented a conformal map, conformal um, mapping method that is promising for for free from redirection, and it can be used for a remote collaboration. And then it provides a mechanism you know, for uh, for remote collaboration, like I said. And then, um, however, we need more careful consideration how we can um, handle obstacles and other users or, or the um, the guest and host. So now, in our method, uh, the guest and host in virtual spaces can can collide, and so we, we don't have a, a method for that, and that we need to look at. And also, if we have any obstacles in between, like it's not attached to the wall, how we can handle that. That's one thing, and also uh, in the future we'd like to look at other tasks. In this one, it was more like a more like a game. But if we had to really do some kind of serious task of, let's say, um, uh, in any kind of space manipulation or, or rearrangement, um, then what will happen? Right. So these are a few things we'd like to do in the future. And um, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for